Thank you, Terry. Um, thank you, Kim, for getting me on the speaker committee. Well appreciated. Um, this speaker today needs really no real introduction. Many people know have either grown up with him or worked with him in some capacity, um, whether in EMS or in the town with the select, select men or whatnot. Um, so I'm just, without further ado, I'm going to introduce Stephen Bunker. Um, so it's not a classification speech, but he's going to give us a talk about the history of the U.S. Coast Guard from where he's retired from. Steve? Thank you very much, Kent, and uh, pleased to be here with you as always. I was a little disappointed uh, this morning. I found out that even uh, polyester tends to shrink a little bit in the, <laughs> in the closet, but I was able to get that on. If you hear a pop go during this one, you'll have to, have to excuse me. But I do enjoy getting back into uh, uniform on, uh, on certain days, on uh, Veterans Day and Memorial Day and the 4th of uh, July, because this is something as part of my, my life I found very important. Uh, to me, and it seems strange that a boy who's grown up in the mountains and lakes area uh, would have such an affinity for the ocean, but there was just something about it that attracted uh, me uh, to it. Uh, as I mentioned in my, in my earlier presentation, while I was going to work at uh, going to school at Southern Maine Community College, ran into a Coast Guard reservist who encouraged me to come along just for a visit and take a ride in the boat out in the harbor to see if I liked it and uh, immediately fell in love uh, with it and before I knew it it was uh, 23 years and they were handing me my flag and saying it's been a great run and it was but I miss it every day. Uh, it, within the guidelines of, uh, of our motto Sem Semper Paratus always prepared uh, we had some uh, minor glitches in computer technology as it, as it came about today, but uh, uh, with the help with Doug, we have uh, figured this one out pretty well. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a brief 12-minute uh, uh, presentation uh, on the Coast Guard role in mission, then I want to go back and talk a little bit more about history because this does not cover the real history that I find uh, most fascinating about the, uh, uh, about the Coast Guard that I, uh, that I know and love. So. Um, which one of these lights can we hit on that? And let's play this and see where where it goes. And hopefully this will not blow up on us. China Sea and the Middle East and throughout 95,000 miles of U.S. coastline and 25,000 miles of our invaluable inland waterway systems. The Coast Guard is a multi-purpose force. It is a military service, a law enforcement organization, a regulatory agency, a first responder, and a member of the intelligence community. Our unique position within the Department of Homeland Security and our enduring role with the Department of Defense allows us to foster domestic and international cooperation, build stakeholder capacity, and exert influence at home and abroad. We have matured over our 230-year history, adapting our people, assets, and capabilities to emerging demands. When a crisis occurs, the American people trust us to respond. As challenges to our national security and global influence grow more complex, the need for a ready, relevant and responsive Coast Guard has never been greater. In times of crisis, the American people count on the U.S. Coast Guard. On-scene initiative and a commitment to mission excellence have been hallmarks of the Coast Guard workforce for its entire 230-year history. The service leads America's response during maritime disasters and catastrophic events. 
And unfortunately, these types of events will continue to impact the maritime domain and our nation's citizens. But the Coast Guard is agile and adaptive with integrated and executable plans that enable rapid response. Our greatest value is the ability to shift quickly between missions to meet national priorities in day-to-day -day operations and in times of crisis. The Coast Guard's broad authorities, strong relationships, and leadership ensure we will continue to meet the mission demands that the American public expects. The Coast Guard serves worldwide on all seven continents, bridging the gaps between security, defense, and diplomacy. We exemplify the U.S. commitment to the rule of law, from upholding international security standards in foreign ports to enforcing UN sanctions. Our success in achieving national security goals is dependent on engagement, partnership, and presence. Some of our competitors can be coercive and antagonistic. The Coast Guard is proud to model acceptable maritime behaviors alongside partner navies and Coast Guards who respect international laws and norms on the high seas. We lead efforts to ensure that maritime interactions are safe and professional. So much so that the white hull with the red racing stripe that has adorned a Coast Guard vessel since 1967 is now an iconic symbol for maritime security and governance. Over the next 10 years, we will be replacing our legacy fleet with a new fleet of highly capable cutters. This investment in new technology ensures continued American maritime safety and security and symbolizes our enduring commitment to our international partners and a rules-based system that promotes peace, security, prosperity, and the sovereignty of all nations. The Arctic is a vast and unforgiving environment. In addition to thousands of American citizens, the Arctic contains vast resources of energy, minerals, fisheries, and other commercial resources. As the climate changes, Access to these resources is expanding, intensifying global interest in the area. The United States has one million square miles of territorial waters, an exclusive economic zone to protect in the Arctic, and the changing environment is raising security, safety, and sustainability concerns. Russia and China have both declared the Arctic a strategic priority, but competition does not have to lead to conflict. For more than 150 years, the Coast Guard has protected American interests in the Arctic and polar regions. A new fleet of polar icebreakers is under construction, and these ships will allow the service to better uphold American sovereignty, advance national strategic interests, and promote economic prosperity in the region. We are a strategic leader in forums such as the Arctic Council, the Arctic Coast Guard Forum, and the International Maritime Organization. Through these organizations, we partner with other nations to keep the region safe, prosperous, and cooperative. As always, the Coast Guard provides maritime safety and security to all Americans, including hundreds of villages, as well as visitors and thousands of seasonal workers in the U.S. Arctic. As the region continues to open, and strategic competition drives more actors to look to the Arctic for economic and geopolitical advantages, the demand for Coast Guard presence in the Arctic will grow. The stakes in the Arctic are high, and we stand ready to lead, maintaining balance and stability in this vast and unforgiving environment. When people engage in fishing that is illegal, unreported, or unregulated, they are undermining a nation's sovereignty threatening its economic security, and weakening global rules-based order. This is IUU fishing, and the Coast Guard is working to stop it. Fish is an essential protein source to over 40% of the global population. IUU fishing hurts a nation's ability to achieve domestic food security. It disrupts the economies of coastal states and small developing island nations, simultaneously hurting local fishers and depleting fish stocks. With vast ocean territories and little capacity to patrol their domains or enforce fisheries regulations, tensions rise 
and global geopolitical security is threatened. When illegally caught fish enter the global market, American fishers, who are subject to laws and standards that promote sustainability, find themselves at a disadvantage. IUU fishing threatens the environment, the economy, and thereby threatens national security. In fact, it has replaced piracy as the leading global maritime security threat. Unfortunately, IUU fishing often happens in concert with other illegal activities, such as human trafficking, forced labor, and the trafficking of other illegal substances. Illegal fishing operations are adaptable, highly mobile, and increasingly sophisticated. They pose a tough maritime governance challenge. But the Coast Guard is ready to respond to this threat. We are working to build a broad coalition of partners around the world to face this challenge head on. We excel at forging human-to-human -human partnerships, which result in collaborative and durable networks. The Coast Guard is providing global leadership to combat IUU fishing, creating a united force for stability, legitimacy, and order. Our nation's system of ports and waterways accounts for over $5.4 trillion of the nation's annual economic activity and supports 30.8 million American jobs. Our ports are essential to our competitiveness in a global marketplace, serving as a gateway for over 90% of all overseas trade. In short, our security and prosperity are inextricably linked to a safe and efficient marine transportation system, or MTS. We're working with international organizations like the IMO to advance sustainability in global shipping. And the Coast Guard has an enduring role in facilitating commerce through the MTS here at home. Our waterways connect America's consumers, producers, manufacturers, and farmers to domestic and global markets. Any disruption to that supply chain, whether man-made or natural, affects our economy and national security. Our broad authorities and strong relationships allow us to adapt quickly and get commerce flowing again after a crisis or natural disaster. And as the country works to recover from the COVID-19 crisis, the Coast Guard's enduring role protecting the vitality of the American economy has never been more important. In the U.S. Coast Guard, our people are our greatest strength, and we're working to make the service even stronger by fostering an inclusive workplace and recruiting diverse talent from the American public we serve. Team performance, decision making, and collaboration increase when leaders intentionally modify their inclusive behaviors. Diverse teams are more innovative and creative, making them better equipped for the challenges of today. To tackle our complex operating environment, we need to harness the full power of the background and experience of every member of our workforce. We are committed to removing the barriers that prevent that from happening. We are funding a number of strategic initiatives to enhance diversity and inclusion in our workforce and fostering leadership that will advance these values. Every member of our service shares a commitment to our core values of honor, respect, and devotion to duty. The Coast Guard needs the very best people our nation has to offer to defend our freedoms, ensure prosperity, and save those in peril. To remain the world's best Coast Guard, we must be the world's most diverse and inclusive Coast Guard. The challenges America faces at home and abroad are complex and the need for a ready, relevant, and responsive Coast Guard has never been greater. We'll continue to lead, to foster domestic and international cooperation, build stakeholder capacity, and exert positive influence in the maritime domain at home and abroad. In the Arctic, we're protecting American communities, natural resources, and our nation's sovereignty. IUU fishing is a threat to individuals, regional stability, global markets, and the environment. And we're working with partners across the globe to fight it. The Coast Guard continues to protect our marine transportation system, ensuring our waterways remain safe and secure conduits for global commerce. And we are fostering inclusion and diversity across our workforce because our people are the cornerstone of our readiness. We're working to ensure a safe, secure, and prosperous homeland, and will remain always ready 
from beneath our great nation. Thank you for your patience on uh, on that. It may, looks like I'm a Coast Guard recruiter, but I really am. I, w I wish I could get back there again. But uh, you could see from that video, w one of the reasons that uh, the Coast Guard attracted me so much is the variation in, in what they do. And unlike other branches of the military, we are one of the five branches that are that are uniformed military and certainly have been involved in uh, every conflict from uh, Revolutionary War on through to today. But unlike other branches of the service, when I joined and came in on a weekend, we were actually taking the duty of active duty Coast, per Coast Guard persons. So if there was a search and rescue mission outside of Portland Harbor, it was actually reservists that were going out there. If it were an oil pollution spill at the major pipeline in Portland from crude oil, it was quite often a Coast Guard reserve unit that was there to help with uh, pollution uh, investigations and cleanup and, uh, and prosecutions. And that, I think, it makes the Coast Guard so, uh, so unique that we have such a diverse peacetime mission that there is always something going on. And if you can uh, remember in recent uh, news broadcasts, even uh, to uh, today, the uh, backup of uh, container ships over on the West Coast trying to get their way through and all the backups in the harbor, uh, it's Coast Guard that's managing that traffic. If you can flip back a few years to the Exxon Valdez in, in Alaska, that was Coast Guard that managed that. Um, more recently, outside of uh, California, the uh, oil line that was uh, dragged by a local ship with its anchor and cut and, was, uh, and has continues to uh, pollute the, uh, the coast near Long Beach, that's Coast Guard that is managing that, that event. Hurricane Katrina, uh, in addition to our other uh, national uh, counter counterparts, uh, with emergency management, it's Coast Guard helicopters that were doing the rescues from people who were stranded on top of their uh, homes in the, in the area themselves. You'll see in the, in the clip in here, it made reference to our ice-breaking uh, cutters. It's Coast Guard that manages two of those, actually three. There's a smaller one that also helps keep open the, uh, the Great Lakes. But that continues to be a international hotspot for concern between ourselves, the Russians, and the Chinese who are all figuring that as a natural resource, a ports and waterway for uh, com commerce, and also an international security issue uh, also. And those, uh, those uh, uh, Coast Guard icebreakers are tremendous apparatus to look at. Ours a bit agent, we've got one under construction now. They're close to a billion dollars for the newest types of, uh, of uh, crafts, if, if you will. Ours are uh, quite some years old now. And they, I've had the opportunity to uh, go on board one of those and, uh, and take a tour on them. And I learned that they're, they don't actually cut through the ice themselves with the huge propulsion engines that they have. Uh, and given how thick their hulls are, they actually ride up onto the ice and then with the weight it crashes them down and then they move a little bit further and crash them down. They can break through ice over six feet in, in, uh, in depth themselves. So uh, they're, uh, they're uh, pretty, uh, pretty high powered, if, uh, if you will. One of the th other things that I would, would mention, particularly for the ladies in the audience, the Coast Guard exemplified itself as one of the most diverse military units and uh, were one of the first to uh, welcome uh, females into the cadre themselves and the Coast Guard Academy uh, was one of the first to have a graduating class of female cadets as young Coast Guard officers and I've had the, the pleasure of serving with many uh, female enlisted and uh, officer corps there and uh, I think it's much to the, to the credit of that, of, that, uh, of that organization itself. Let me uh, take a risk and see if I can get to a picture or two. A little bit of history. How much time? Have I got five minutes left? Five minutes to include questions and answers. Okay, I'll go real quick. Uh, the uh, recognized as the as the father of the US Coast Guard uh, is Alexander Hamilton. And if you're a history buff themselves, you would know that Alexander Hamilton served with General George Washington uh, during the war themselves and he was his aide de camp during the war. Several years after that, George Washington appointed him as the first Secretary of the Treasury. 
And uh, at that point in time, we had run a multi-million dollar deficit from the war itself. And I'm not sure we've progressed that much further nowadays with current uh, federal funding. But his first challenge was is how to replenish the, 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 uh, uh, the, the federal treasury itself. And he petitioned uh, Congress with the help of uh, then President uh, Washington to uh, initiate the construction of the first 10 Coast Guard cutters. And they were referred to as revenue cutters. And their full intent was to uh, make sure that we impose uh, tariff taxes on any imports coming into the U.S. So we stationed those 10 uh, Coast Guard cutters along our major ports and waterways on the East Coast themselves to uh, bring in revenue, also reduce uh, smuggling, uh, moonshining, pirating, and uh, also uh, combating uh, slavery coming in from, uh, uh, from Africa itself. And because the um, constitutional uh, Navy, once the war had ended, had been disbanded, the Coast Guard's revenue cutters were really the only ones that we had in the maritime provisions uh, uh, themselves. And those expanded on later on. We also had a life-saving service, which is a separate uh, organization uh, uh, in, the, in the country it's, itself, that in many parts of the uh, coastline, particularly on the East Coast, we have very rugged coastal terrain, and it was not uh, infrequent to have uh, sailing vessels run aground along the coast. There were stationed uh, along the coast themselves, um, Coast Guard life-saving stations where they would actually row out uh, in, in boats to uh, get the uh, disabled boats and uh, save uh, people from the water themselves. Or if they got out there, they would uh, run out a large cable connected onto the vessel itself and allow uh, rescuers uh, to be able to slide their way uh, back into the coast uh, themselves. In the late 1800s, by Act of Congress, the life-saving uh, corporation and uh, the revenue cutters came together and that was really the first start of the formal United States Coast Guard themselves and we've been around ever ever since then and have uh, literally fought in uh, every major uh, battle from then on on through. Uh, can any historians in here remember what actually caused the demise of Alexander Hamilton? <laughs> he did. A, a political duel with Aaron Burr in a uh, political fight themselves. We could still have dueling back in those days. He was critically injured and died about two days uh, after that. So after a, uh, a great uh, 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 history lesson, if you, if you will, and a great uh, entertainment into politics, uh, a sad ending to, to that particular uh, 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 ending to him. The last thing I want to mention to you in, in our uh, history is make reference to the uh, the story of Douglas Monroe, M-U-N-R-O, he is the only Coast Guardsman to be the Congressional Medal of Honor winner. I've been noticed a lot of folks, uh, particularly during World War II, as we watched the uh, uh, Marines and Army uh, come ashore in uh, landing crafts on, uh, or Higgins boats themselves, those were actually manned by Coast Guards, uh, uh, coxswain or steermen, if you will. Uh, the old joke is the Coast Guard is the shallow water sailors, but in reality, because we're used to handling smaller boats and in more shallow waters and being able to navigate in, in rough seas themselves, uh, the Navy used uh, Coast Guardsmen to actually ferry uh, the, the fighters to and from uh, the beaches themselves. And in the uh, fight for the landing on Guadalcanal, uh, 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 Sigmund First Class uh, Monroe was a part of a 15-boat uh, uh, detachment that was bringing groups of Marines onto the shore themselves and ferrying them back and forth. They came under extremely heavy fire from uh, Japanese who were dug in just waiting for them along uh, the shore themselves and a signal went out to rescue a group of Marines that were being uh, literally slaughtered along the beachfront themselves. Uh, they came under a horrendous uh, fire. They had been targeted and just waited for by, by the Japanese themselves. And uh, in the confusion, 
uh, Sigelman First Class Monroe rallied those ships and uh, landing crafts around, uh, put his boat in front of and between the Marines and the landing crafts that were rescuing them to draw their fire uh, upon them. And because of him, I uh, was able to get the majority of the re Marines off the shore. Sadly, he was the last boat coming off and was uh, tragically wounded. He and two other members on board the ship themselves died several days uh, uh, later from his wounds. The last words that he said to his shipmates uh, as they rescued him was, did they get off? And he uh, passed away because of, uh, of that. Um, one of the other slogans that I would en end up with to say on here, particularly as we looked at the, uh, the uh, life-saving uh, uh, crews that went out on the shore themselves, uh, these folks coined the phrase uh, that's ever long uh, been a part of the Coast Guide is, you always have to go out, but you're not required to come back. And for those folks, it was very tragic uh, circumstances. They lost many lives from that, and the, the Coast Guard has kept that motto, along with Semper Paratus, always be prepared uh, to uh, uh, motivate us along in, uh, in what we do, both in, uh, both in peacetime and in the future. And I could talk much more, but I'm going to surrender the microphone. Any, any questions of me, please? Where do I sign up? <laughs> I just happen to have applications in my police. Yes, please. Is, is the Coast Guard the only branch uh, of the armed services that is under both Department of Defense and Homeland Security? Uh, we've, we've vacillated from initially from the Treasury, then the Department of Transportation, because we had such a maritime shipping relationship to that, then in results to 9-11, uh, creation of the Department of Homeland Security and worked our way over from there. And then by an act of uh, the President during wartime, we can be transitioned over and be a part of the Navy themselves. So we're, we're uh, multi-purpose, if you will. So it's the only branch that has that. Yep, indeed. Other questions, please? Yes, sir. Is the Border Patrol under you, or are they a separate division? Uh, they are still within a part of, uh, of a Homeland Security, but a separate division themselves. Yes, uh, Richard. Where is the basic training for the Coast Guard? Uh, in uh, New Jersey. In New Jersey, yep. Yes, please, way back. Yeah. How's the overall effectiveness uh, of the Coast Guard been over the last several years with things like uh, consideration of budget cuts? Um, Are they maintaining or, or dropping off? or? I, I am biased. I would say that we have been struggling. Our fleet uh, tends to fall way behind as far as age of our fleet themselves and the number of, of fleets. And because we're a smaller branch of, uh, of, the, of the five branches themselves, we sometimes get overpowered by requests by the Navy or Air Force for, uh, for increases. But we're getting much better, if you will. As I say, we've got a new uh, ice breaker that's under construction now, and a lot of our deep water ships the uh, 300 footers and above now are, are in process of being replaced now but I'll have to say standing out early on I uh, served on a lot of rusty buckets and but we're uh, we're moving along a little bit better and because of the maritime concerns and port security issues with international security points uh, they've uh, improved our funding from uh, from that uh, that standpoint and with the import uh, interdiction of drugs and illegal immigra immigrations coming in, they've uh, increased our, uh, our high endurance cutters to get out in the, in the ocean fronts to, uh, to uh, blunt that. Other questions? Thank you all very much for your kind attention.